What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the DK Garage. I'm Jeremy, that's Joe, and this is the Race Day Rundown. Yeah, we're at Watkins Glen to come back from a two-week vacation. Uh, We hope you enjoyed it. We definitely did. But we've got race action, road course action at that. They're in the 750 horsepower package. We talked a lot about uh, what we could kind of expect in our full video podcast. That is above. Also, if you want to get involved in our free weekly DraftKings contest, please go ahead and drop your uh, DraftKings tag in the uh, comment section below. We'll get you added, and you can be a part of that contest weekly. We've had a lot of fun and engagement there. Let's continue to grow that. But we're excited to get this race day started. Jeremy, you popped your rowdy, it looks like. So uh, you want to It's time to get to work, man. It's been two weeks off. Uh, I love the Glen. We talked about it in the podcast. It's one of my favorite tracks overall. Um, this is going to be a fun race. Really looking forward to this action. There's a lot to get to. We covered a lot in our podcast, uh, but this is short and sweet. So... Watkins Glen is 90 laps. Uh, it's only a 2.4 mile track, so quite a bit shorter than the last road course we were at, which was Road America. 63 performance points are on the board. Only 20 laps in the first and second stage, and a 50 lap run in the set in the third stage. Chase Elliott won the last two times we were here. Uh, I think everyone pretty much knows that he's going to be stout, but he is not the most expensive driver on the board. That would be Mr. Rowdy, Kyle Busch. Yeah, Kyle Busch is the most expensive driver this week, so he is top- topping the DraftKings salary board at 10900 but there's a good reason he's starting 20th. He is a he could have a big impact on this race, um, and we are going to give you our DK Impact scores. Those scores are on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being they're going to have a huge impact on this race. So, we break that down. We give you go driver by driver, get you in and out of here. I've given Kyle Busch a nine. I think he's going to have a big impact on this race starting 20th. A lot of place differential upside. That's something that we're looking for. There are not very many laps. There's not a lot of potential performance points, dominator points, if you will. Not uh, a lot of them available. And Kyle Busch is one of those three drivers at the top that have a lot of ability to rack up those dominator points in this environment. Yeah, there, there's not a lot of Dominator points on the board, so any that you can get or potentially keep away from a Chase Elliott or a Martin Truex, that's key. You know, normally when we come to a race, the if you're the most expensive guy, you gotta you got to win the race to really pay it off. you got to dominate. you got to pay off that price tag that way. Kyle Busch, I think, being less than 11000 starting 20th, If he's hitting a top five with a few fastest laps, if he's able to get a few laps led, that's even more bonus. He doesn't need to do much to be worth it. I think Kyle Busch is a great play. I also am at a nine. Chase Elliott, 10-6. 10. 10-6? No, 10. I'm at a 10. Oh, you're at a 10. I'm at a 10. Wow. Yeah. Already, you're just coming in. You're just flying in. Next. Okay, yeah. well, no, he's starting 11th. <laughs> you threw me for a loop there. I'm like, just yelling 10 off the board. He's a 10, man. Man, you don't give a 10 very often, so that's surprising to see that he's that strong, uh, in your opinion, this week. Because I'm at a 9. I think him, Truex, we talked about it in the podcast, they together, there's one of these two I feel strongly are going to win this race. Which one's going to be the dominator? You're strongly opinionated on Case Elliott this week. Well, look, I think uh, it it is NASCAR. Anything can happen. Um, Chase Elliott was in prime position to win the Daytona race and they threw a caution for a rainbow or something like that. So, uh, anything is possible. Um, but I think if it's just kind of, uh, punching in, you know, normal day at work, I think Chase Elliott is, he's the guy, um, he, you get him with some place differential. He led 80 laps the last time we were here. Um, and Truex was right behind him, but he just couldn't do anything with them. We'll get to Truex in a second, but he really hasn't been as strong this year. We noted that in our podcast. At this point, you win the last two Watkins Glen races. You win the last two road course races this year, um, and was certainly and finished second in the other one. And then you were in position to win the first one at Daytona with some wacky stuff happening keeps you from winning. He's really just a couple things happening away from winning all four road courses. And this is his best road course track. He's a 10 for me. I couldn't 
disagree with any of that. He's very strong. I've given him a nine. I think he's got a strong uh, path to value. Martin Truex Jr. or Martin Truex Jr. in ten four starting ninth is next, and I am on him just as strongly. He has an average finish of one point seven over the last three races here because he's finished second to uh, Chase Elliott twice, and then he had the win before him. So. A lot of good things could potentially happen with Chase or, or uh, with uh, Martin Truex this week, but you s- tend to lean a little bit stronger on 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 Chase this week. I think they're pretty equal. I want to have exposure to both, but uh, I don't want to have too much to one or the other. So when it comes to the decision between Chase Elliott and Truex, you can definitely play both. Um, Truex in the last three races here has an average finish of one point six. First, second, second, behind Chase Elliott. So there's a case to be made for Truex. I gave him a nine. I'm strong on him. Uh, The biggest thing is, is it going to be a little bit more what we've seen in the past or what we've seen this year? Um, He might only get to third or fourth, which would be a great run for him, but if he's not getting any fastest laps or very few fastest laps, and if he's not leading laps, it makes him in a very tough position to even potentially stack with Elliott. I think you... If you're building a lot of lineups, you want to have a lot of exposure to both of these guys. If you're maybe playing it a little safer, playing a fewer lineups, or just trying to kind of slowly grow your bankroll, to me, Chase Elliott is the guy you go with, not Truex. But both are in great positions this week. Kyle Larson, 10-2, starting fourth, is next on the board. I uh, pulled a stat out of uh, our garage thoughts, uh, which is our data, um, I guess, pile of data that we put together <laughs> yeah. every week spreadsheet yeah and uh pulled a piece of a nugget out of that if you will and put it in our dk insights which is a portion of our race guide that link both those links are down below uh down below in our description but the average place differential here for kyle larson is negative 11.6 and that is something that stood out to me not having the greatest data but he's on a new team Coming back at this track, we talked a lot about that. Being Chase Elliott's teammate, he could have a strong day. You know, know, that makes me think of, and we mentioned this uh, when we were doing, uh, or I'm sure we mentioned it in some way when we were doing our Sonoma breakdown. Larson, I believe, uh, obviously he metriced his way to a pole at a Sonoma, but that was like his third or fourth uh, Sonoma pole. And the other ones he actually earned. But he his average finish was like 13th or 14th. Kyle Larson's pass seems to be qualified. You can definitely put down some fast laps. But either it was him or the car that just kind of faded back towards the end of the race. This year, we've kind of seen a little bit opposite of that. Um, he was looking strong at the, the Daytona road course, um, but got in an a little hot in a corner. Denny was there, spun him out. Not a great day. Um, Coda was right there, was second. Would have probably won that if the rain didn't shorten the race. Obviously, Dominated was the best car at Sonoma, a place where he traditionally went backwards. And Watkins Glen, going into this year, I think most people would say was his best road course. Uh, statistically, we're seeing kind of similar data. I think this could be one of those races that you, if you want to get off of the chalk of Elliott, the chalk of Truex, Larson is a great play. I'm at a seven on him. I'm a little hesitant because there's not a lot of PD upside. He has not looked quite as strong the last few weeks as he did for like the, the most of the season before that. Um, so I'm a little bit more hesitant, but I think Larson is a guy who's certainly capable of getting up there and spoiling everyone like me, who's going to be all over Chase. Yeah, I've given him a six. I think his average finish of 12.3 on road courses this year is just a little bit scary in his starting position to be able to really reach value. So I've kind of uh, given him a six in that form. Kurt Busch, $10,000 this week, starting 17th. Um, I think he is someone that has a pretty strong path to value um and i've given him a nine because of that he's been strong here at watkins Glen, and he's been strong on road courses this this year as a whole he's got uh uh, an average finish of 10th he has two top fives he's got a lot of ability on road courses and we've seen that play out throughout the year i think 
he could go a little bit under under owned because of that higher price tag. I, I kind of want to shift to him in some GPP environments. I like Kurt Busch a lot. I'm at an eight. And the main reason why I'm only at an eight, not at a nine or possibly even a 10 um, is not necessarily performance or recent history. It's just the fact that it's $10,000. I'm going to want to have guys like Kyle Busch and Elliott together and then possibly mixing in Truex and Larson in their different combos. That puts Kurt Busch at a really tough spot price-wise. So for me, I'm at an eight. But man, he's got some great runs this year in road courses and also in his past. The team is on a little tear. Um, There's a lot to like about Kurt Busch. GPP environments, I think he's a really strong option there. William Byron, 9,800 starting 15th. He's somebody that uh, we are a little bit more on the caution side this week. If you look at our driver spotlight, he'll be our cautioned driver this week. I've given him a six. I think he's shown ability this year to have flashes of greatness on road courses. He's led and looked strong, but just hasn't had the finishes, had had some bad luck, and overall had really strong portions of the season where you could really rely on him. I think he could sneak into a situation where he might go a little bit overlooked, but I don't know if I really want to lean too much on him this week. Yeah, I thought we kind of summarized his uh, his performance on road courses um, in our main episode. I'll keep it kind of short. I'm at a five on Byron. I'm kind of right there iffy. I think he has that upside, but he also has that risk price-wise um, with some of the other plays and what I'm kind of looking to do. Uh, this particular slate for me, Byron is more of GPP. I don't really consider him a safe cash play. Um, so for me, I'm not as high, but I think five is still a decent score. Joey Logano, 9,600 starting second. We start getting into the Penske drivers here. They've got first, second, and third on the starting grid this week. Joey Logano in the second position is I've given him a seven. I think he's been somebody that's been consistent throughout the year on road courses. He has the uh, highest average finish of sixth. He's got three top fives. He's been fast in the 750 horsepower package, which they're in this weekend. I think we could see some consistency, but being that he's starting second, it's going to be something that's going to be hard for him to do really well unless he's dominating this race. And I don't know, based on some of the other drivers we talked about, if he's going to be in that position. You know, this is the first time I'm actually seeing uh, your scores, and I'm just noticing that we have the same rating across the board for Penske, which I didn't expect. Um, Obviously, we rate them a little differently, but we have the same number. Um, A little surprised by that. I'm at a 7 on Logano, as are you. Been strong on, like, his data on road courses looks great. Um, His data in 750 horsepower package looks great. Um data here especially the last three races very concerning and the fact that he's starting second also concerning with the guys we've already talked about Uh, I think seven is still a solid score I think he's a great GPP play Um, if you want to just be ballsy and play him in some cash you could certainly do it I wouldn't fault you for it Um, but not necessarily where I'm going with it Denny Hamlin 9400 starting sixth I've given him an impact score of seven. I think he's somebody that uh, really is in a position in the season where he is going to try to do everything he can to pick up stage points and put him in himself in a position to win whenever he gets that opportunity. This week at a road course could be that. He's not a slouch by any stretch of the imagination in this uh, environment. He's been strong in the 750 horsepower equipment. I think he's a fine play. I don't want to over... Um, value him and go too far um, in, in, in rostering him, but I definitely want some uh, decent exposure this week to uh, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin is in a really interesting spot for this race and for the season because he's leading the points, so he's potentially the regular season champion. No wins, and the way this season has gone, he is kind of looking at a potential must-win or at least perform really well because Larson's only 13 points behind him. Uh, He's, we've already talked about Larson's been good on road courses this year. He's been career wise, career wise at Michigan. He's been really good. Obviously Daytona is a little bit different story. Um, I think Hamlin and that team, they got to be really on their game 
the rest of the year. And if they have the opportunity to go for a win, they do it. But they're going to be looking for top fives and, like you said, stage points, stage wins, get those playoff points. I'm at a seven on Hamlin. It's a pretty high score. Um, I think he can pay it off. I think you could even play him semi-comfortably in those cash games if you want to go that way. Um, But I think there is a lot of pressure on that 11 team. And we've seen in the past they do make mistakes, both Hamlin and that crew. Uh, it'll be a li- little interesting to see how their remaining season goes. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the Penske drivers. We've got two of them here: Ryan Blaney, ninety two hundred, starting third, and Brad Kozlowski starting uh, first. He's nine thousand dollars. Looking at it, wow. Yeah, we're we're both across the board. We've given them sixes. Yeah. Um, so these this is we see them very much uh, as very similar plays. I think the the data doesn't really support this season or in previous races here the ability to want to feel strong and rostering them too much we might want to sprinkle them in if you're doing a lot of uh, a lot of rosters in a, a multi-entry uh, contest but i would be very limited in any cash game scenarios or anything that i'm doing with uh, my core plays yeah it's it you can make a case for these guys until you get to those guys at the top of the salary board because those are those are the guys that are getting the bulk of the performance points and they're the ones getting the wins without Blaney and Brad doing that this week makes it really hard with that price tag now if they were maybe closer to that low eight range I might have a little bit more consideration um, because Brad is certainly capable of eking out a top 10 I think Blaney has that capability too personally I'm more on that barely making that top 10 in this race uh so for that starting position that salary i'm at a six so it's a little favorable but obviously be a little cautious with those two christopher or christopher bell 8800 starting seventh is somebody we both think is in a good spot this week starting seventh is uh an iffy spot for most people but in this race and with his recent performance i think it offers a leg up on the competition we've already talked about and he, he could eke out a little bit of uh performance points and steal him away from a couple of the guys at the top potentially because this year he's been pretty strong in road courses he's already got the win at uh, daytona the daytona road course and he's uh been in really good spots throughout the season in the four races he's got two top fives it's very strong i've given him a nine where where'd you land i got a eight um and that's because you right he got a win and he got second at road america um he was able to get around his teammate Kyle Busch, who had led laps, who'd looked great, um, but was not in the same class as Elliott in that race. Uh, but Bell has that upside, um, and I think this is a track that he could do uh, fairly well at as well. Um, it's pretty fast, semi-technical. I'm at an eight. Uh, I would like to be a little higher, but um, the incons- I don't know if it's really inconsistent, but just what we saw at Sonoma and Coda kind of bring some of his numbers down a little bit. And also only with a few um, positive place differential upside makes it a little bit more hesitant on me with that price tag. So I'm at an eight uh, because there's a lot of other drivers that that we're going to get to that I like a lot. Alex Bowman, 8,600 starting 10th. I landed on a seven. I think some of the drivers we're going to be getting to here pretty soon offer better pass to value, a little bit more consistency throughout this season. I'm just right there on the cusp of wanting to ro- roster him in, in some GBP tournaments, not in the cash, cash game by any stretch. It is definitely tough with Bowman, and that's kind of why I gave him an eight. I think a lot of people are going to feel that way about Bowman, and he's been much better this year on road courses. Um, and even in his career, he's not been terrible. Um, it You certainly don't necessarily see a top three upside from him, but that's exactly when Bowman – comes out of nowhere and gets to, gets a win or something crazy. Uh, he's been inconsistent. It's hard to trust that 48 team, but, man, if they're clicking, um, I think that's in a good spot. So I gave him an eight. Kevin Harvick, 8,500, starting fifth. I landed on a four, and I see that you actually landed on a four as well. We talked about him um, to an extent in the podcast, and this year has really not been the year for his team in – road course environments and it's not been pretty by any stretch of the imagination with that fifth place starting position i don't really see any value it is really tough to want to play harvick i can't really make any cases based on his performance this year 
even some of his performance in prior races here. Tough spot. I'm at a four. Um, and that's because I'm all over the next guy. Chase Briscoe, 8,300. He starts 27th. He's been really good. We talked about him quite a bit in the main show. I gave him a nine. And I see that you gave him a nine as well. I would imagine a lot of people are going to be on him. He's going to be very popular and rightfully so. Um, any comments about Briscoe? Yeah, he has two top tens in the four road course races this year. That's a very strong uh, fact that you can look at and say, all right, let's base some data off that. If he gets a top 12, man, you're looking at almost 6X. That is really doable, especially with uh, his place differential. That difference there is exactly what you're looking for with that price tag. It'd be nice to see it a little bit lower, but still, it works if he hits his targets. And then also the fact that his teammate won the most recent race, Amarola, they know that Briscoe's best chance of making the playoffs is a win at a road course. I still favor Indy, but this could be a track that either they use to really catapult them and set them up for Indy, um, and that could mean trying to get a top 10. He does that. That is phenomenal. Uh, but the next two guys on the uh, board, to me, the way we discuss them, I feel like they're basically uh, very similar plays, just different drivers. That would be Ross Chastain and Tyler Reddick. Chastain is 8,100, starts 12th. Reddick is uh, starting 13th at 8,000, very close. Other than me on Chastain, we are we kind of got the same scores for these guys. They're very close. I'm at an 8 on Chastain and a 7 for Tyler Reddick. Yeah, I'm at a 7 on Chastain and a 7 on Reddick. I think they're very similar plays. I would like to play both of them um, and have quite a bit of a exposure to them in this price range because I think they have a great top 10 upside. They've both been strong at points throughout the season, um, but... I don't want to go overboard on them because there's a couple guys below them that I think have a good pass to value as well. Yeah, the next guy um, that you got to talk about would be Chris Busher, 7,800, starting 24th. I'm at a 7. I see that you gave him an 8. He's your kind of strong play of that sort of really hard, that mid-tier of the slate. Um, he has not finished like outside the top 20 like ever in his cup career or something crazy like that he is yeah on road courses on road courses i mean yeah yeah yeah. it's been solid yeah really solid yeah no so that's why i see that he has that path and i think reaching 5x isn't really a challenge for him uh so matty d um 7600 uh starting 14th uh we're both at a six there's some upside there uh, especially if he shows up with a car like road america where he led laps got a good solid finish other than that Wood Brothers has not had the best car. Um, the next guy I think that's kind of worth a little mention would actually be Daniel Suarez. 7,500, starting 21st. He's got an average finish in three races here of, what is it, eighth? Yeah, eighth. He's got two top fives in that same span, um, which means two-thirds of the races here, he is finishing in the top five. They've been strong at points um, in their road course, pa- road course package there at Trackhouse. They've looked strong at points in 750 equipment. We'll see if that translates here. It looks to be one of his better tracks. Yeah, so I ended up with a 7 on Suarez. Uh, you did as well. Newman, I feel like, is in a tough spot right below him, 7,300. He starts 28th. I got to give him a 4. Um, road courses have not been kind to him. He's We've seen him in many spots like this where he's got lots of PD upside, does not come through. I see you're a little higher on him, but uh, Newman is a tough play for me this week. Yeah, I, I'm one spot up on him. I'm giving him a five. I think he has a little bit of uh, upside, but with his very poor performance, I don't uh, see rostering very much. Uh, McDowell's an, a guy that we're both on uh, to an extent. Not our favorite play down in this range, but uh, certainly rosterable. 7,200 starting 25th. I gave him a 7. Yeah, I landed on a 7 as well. I think he's somebody to look at in this range that has performed strongly in road course uh, settings this year. Uh, he is somebody that has two uh, two top 10s. Very strong whenever you see some place differential that he offers as well. I think he's a fine play in that position. So, unfortunately, I... I, I this might end up burning me, but I think I may be potentially pushing my chips all in on the next guy, Eric Jones. He's starting 22nd. He's $7,000, a little higher than what I would ideally like him at. Uh, but I did, I had to give him a nine because his stats here for his career are crazy. 
And what he's done in that 43 car this year on road courses, averaging like 15th, it's impressive. I mean, he doesn't need to do that much with that price tag starting where he's at. I really like Jones. How how about you? Yeah, I think he finds himself in a position where you almost have to lock him in in that price tag and that place differential upside with how strong he's been in this package and how strong he's been in his career here. I've laid it on a nine as as well with him because I think below him, we're starving for value below this. I think this middle tier has been strong, and there's a lot of plays to pick from that you can pair nicely with the guys at the top. But below him, there's really only one guy I'm comfortable with really playing um, because the other guys, it's just hard for them to reach value. We see Eric Almirola, 6,800 starting eight. We're, I'm at a four. We're both at a four both on him four, because yeah. the place differential's not there. He hasn't been super strong on road courses. Bubba Wallace, 6,600 starting 26th. I, we both landed on a six with him. It, yeah. It's He's viable, I, I feel, but his road course data and this year hasn't translated either with his new new car. You can't be confident in playing Bubba Wallace. The upside is there. The capability is there. That's why we gave him a six because performance-wise or – previous performance wise um on road courses overall and any sort of team uh i'd be closer to like a three or a four um but i'm recognizing this new car um that capability cole custer is another guy we're both at a six on because he has i think a little bit more um upside on road courses than bubba does we've seen it but starting 19th at 6500 i think that makes it a little tough just because I don't know how many spots he's able to move up. Yeah, that's the challenging part is it doesn't offer a lot of upside potential being that he has a higher starting position. That's why I'm only at a six on him. And and then you get to uh, to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He's 6,300 starting 18th. I think he's somebody that could find a way to reach value if he has a strong run. We've seen him at times look really strong in the 750 package. I don't see him um, finishing that great, but I think he could have a solid day and it pay off. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you look at his data here, it's, it's, uh, you don't want to look at it. It's not pretty at all. But in the last three overall road courses this year, he's got an average finish of around 12th. That's pretty solid. Um, at 6,100, if he's able to do that. 6,300. Uh, oh, well, sorry. We're talking about Stenhouse. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was on Dylan. My bad. Uh, I don't actually like Stenhouse that much. Uh, I'm at a five on Stenhouse. I was trying to make the case for Dylan. Um, no, Stenhouse is not a, a big favorite of mine this week. Uh, his data is it's not that great. I know he had that really great run at Road America that won people some, some good money because he was kind of that difference maker for most people. It's possible, uh, but I don't like Stenhouse that much this, this week. Go ahead and make your case for Austin Dillon. So Austin Dillon, <laughs> he's only 6,100. He's does not have great history here, but as I was saying, about – an average finish of 12th in the last three road courses. If he does that, or even a little bit worse, that's still knocking on the door of 5X. You are a little bit starved for some some good um, talent down in this price range to round out your lineups. He's kind of that best of this range. And he's also in a points battle with his teammate, Tyler Reddick. If we don't get a bunch of new winners, there's going to be a couple drivers getting on points. Obviously, Dylan wants to do that, so he needs to do his best the rest of this this year if he's going to make the playoffs. Yeah, they need to have a strong performance here, and I think that uh, will make it a, him a viable option here at this price tag. James Davison, 5,900, starting 36. I've given him a six. I think he is somebody that's been okay on road courses, starting as far back as he is with that price tag as somebody to look at. I'm not saying he's a strong play by any means, but I'm going to have a little bit of exposure in some uh, GPP. Yeah, we got to give a little shout out to him because uh, uh, I think the highest we've ever rated him before this might have been a two or a three. Um, but he's, like you said, he's done okay on road courses. This price tag, a little higher than what I would like, but hey, it is what it is. 36. I mean, if he's able to get inside that top 30, um, that's going to be kind of worth it, and he would be a great pivot off of Dylan. But obviously that equipment makes it a little tough to feel confident. So GPP only for me on Davison. Uh, but i, I got to give him a six as well. Um, really beyond that, um, there's no one else that I think that's really worth mentioning. I mean, uh, check out the, the race guide for the rest of the impact scores for the rest of these drivers. 
Um, but I think that's kind of where we, we wrap it up. Uh, any last little thoughts before we uh, start building our lineups for what should be a really fun race? I'm excited to get back to racing. It's a fun Sunday morning, finally, to have racing again. I'm looking forward to it, and I know you all are looking forward to it out there. We appreciate you watching. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe. It's uh, It helps us, and we know that we're providing content relative to what you're looking for. Again, if you would like to get into that DraftKings contest, Drop your DK tag below in the comments. If you uh, want to go ahead and do that, we're looking forward to it. We're doing a lot of stuff active on Twitter. So if you want to go over there and uh, follow us, check that out. Our links to all the socials are below. And then again, our race guide uh, and some of our other content is available on our Patreon. That link's below. We also could use the support because we want to upgrade our content and cameras and everything. Uh, we've not had the greatest of luck with some of the technology here recently, but we're continuing to con try to grow and uh, provide more relative content for you. So that's how we can do that a little bit quicker. And we definitely appreciate that support. So I don't really have anything more except for I'm super excited to get this thing rolling. Man, it's been fun. It's been great to kind of get back to a little bit more of a routine. So without further ado, this has been the DK Garage. I'm Joe. That's Jeremy. And we'll see you next time.